Lord, I'm here to receive from you by your word. Speak directly to me, Lord, by your word. Establish my change of level by your word. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, let there be transformation by your word. In the name of Jesus. Father, thank you. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Our Father, we thank you this morning for the privilege we have to be in your presence yet again. We thank you, Lord, because of the fact that everyone you choose and cause to approach you departs with the fullness of your house. Therefore, this morning, fill us again with the goodness of your house and transform every life here present. We give you the praise and glory in Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Somebody believe, say loud amen. amen. Give Jesus a big, big hand and please be seated in his presence. It is my new dawn era. What eyes have not seen nor ears heard shall become the order of the day in my life this year. Congratulations. Amen and amen. Praise God. This month the prophetic focus is obedience gateway to realms of noiseless breakthroughs. And our teaching series for our Sunday services has been every commandment of scriptures is for our profiting. In the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 and 17 the Bible says, all scripture is given unto us by the inspiration of God and is profitable. So God's word, every aspect of God's word, every commandment issued from God is ordained for our profiting. Ultimately what that means is that our engagement of God's word has nothing to do with profiting God, but rather profiting us. God gains nothing from our obedience. It is we who gain everything from our obedience. Our engagement of God's word is ordained for our profiting. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, beginning from verse 1, it said, If you hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord your God to observe to do all that I command you this day, he said that the Lord your God will set you on high above all nations. There is nothing there about what happens to God. It is all about what happens to you. As a result of our engagement, therefore, every one of us must recognize that it is we that are affected by our obedience. This is very important for us to note this morning. Not all winners sweat to win. Sweating is a cause. In the book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 19, God cursed and said, In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread. That means that you are now ordained for struggle-free advancement. Sweat-free advancement. And I know that by the encounter we are having upon this holy mountain this morning, I see each one of us escaping the hold of every struggle of life. You believe it, say louder, amen. I say you believe it, say louder, amen. Well, simply put, it is what you and I do with what God says that terminates our struggles. In John chapter 2, those people at the wedding of Cana had come in contact with what could have been an open shame. But suddenly, a commandment came. And Mary said to those people, he said, whatever he tells you to do, do it. And in verse 11, the Bible says, this beginning of miracles did Jesus in Canaan of Galilee. He said, and he manifested his glory. The glory of God was manifested following the obedience of man. For somebody here, under the sound of my voice, the glory of God shall be manifested in your life in this season. You believe it, say loud, amen. Well, like we have seen, it is the commandments of God that we engage that determines what becomes of you and of me. Therefore, this morning we are going to be looking at one vital commandment, and that is the soul winning commandment. Say it with me, the soul winning commandment. Say it louder, the soul winning commandment. 
with a sense of conviction, the soul winning commandment. And we are looking at what is it and what is in it. What is the soul winning commandment? It is the harvesting of souls into the kingdom and their establishment in the faith and in the church. It is the harvesting of souls into the kingdom and their establishment in the faith and in the church. And I'd like us to recognize a few things about this commandment this morning as grace will be released upon each one of us for greater dimension of effectiveness in obeying this commandment in the name of Jesus Christ. Number one thing is that soul winning is every believer's responsibility. It is every believer's responsibility. John chapter, chapter 15 and verse 2, the Bible says there, it said, And every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. He said, And every branch that beareth fruit, he, fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. The expectation of God is that everyone that is a branch of the vine, that is you and I as believers, are ordained to be fruitful branches. In the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, beginning from verse 17 to 20, it said, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. He said, and ye of God, he said, and who has reconciled us unto himself by Jesus Christ and has given unto us the ministry of reconciliation. That is the ones who are called new creatures in verse 17 have been given the ministry of reconciliation in verse 18. He said in verse 19, he said to wit that God was in us reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing trespasses unto them, but has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. And now look at verse 20. He said, now then. Those of us that are now new creatures. He said we are now ambassadors of Christ. Everyone that is a child of God is ordained by God to be a minister of reconciliation. That means a soul winner. Bringing people in contact with God. That is our responsibility. Shout hallelujah. In Mark chapter 16 and verse 15, the Bible said, Go into all the world and Preach the gospel to every creature. So everyone that is a child of God has the responsibility of reconciling the world back to God. This is very important. It is the most fundamental of our responsibilities. It is the most foundational of our responsibilities. Everyone that is a child of God has the responsibility of reconciling the world back to God. In the book of Matthew chapter 28, beginning from verse 19, we see Jesus speaking here. He said, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Ghost. He said, and teaching them to observe all things that have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. It means that every commitment to advancing the kingdom or connecting men to God always secures God's backing. This is our responsibility. It doesn't matter what your vocation is. Your responsibility as far as God is concerned is reconciling the world back to him. Shout hallelujah. I said shout hallelujah. This is our responsibility. Number two is that soul winning is the most profitable stewardship platform. It is the most profitable stewardship platform. Remember we said earlier that every commandment of scriptures is for our profiting. And soul winning we are saying here is the most profitable stewardship platform. Now what makes it so profitable? Let's look at this quickly from scriptures. In Matthew chapter 16 and verse 26, the Bible makes it, makes it clear to us. He said, for what is a man profited? Look at this very closely. If he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul, or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Look at that. One man. And it says the whole world. 
He said, if he gains the whole world, I'd like you to put this in very clear perspective. What is in the whole world? All the oil fields in the world, all the gold deposits in the world, all the diamond mines in the world, every one of the central banks of the world, if you combine them together, it is not worth one soul. What God is saying, therefore, is that the soul of a man is the greatest asset to God. It is the greatest asset to God. The soul of one man is the greatest asset to God. And when you begin to trade in the greatest asset, you are bound to make the greatest profit. You are bound to make the greatest profit. What will a man give in exchange for his soul you cannot trade the soul of man on the open market there is nothing that is valuable enough to trade for one man's soul god is saying that one man's soul therefore is worth more than anything else because the truth is this in the open market you only buy a thing for what it is worth and god is saying there is nothing that you have in this world everything that is valuable put together is not worth one soul so anytime you find a believer that is trading in the advancement of the kingdom of god to see souls won unto christ that individual is trading in the most profitable business i see somebody here receiving grace for this trade in the name of jesus that is why Romans chapter 12 verse 11 the Bible says not slothful in business but fervent in spirit serving the Lord serving God is big time business serving the interest of his kingdom is big time business shout hallelujah I say shout hallelujah so his soul is the most valuable asset and therefore anyone that trades in it cannot lack proofs and profits in life we also discover that when you keep his commandments all things begin working together for your good remember we're asking the question what makes this engagement this stewardship platform the most profitable when we keep his commandments all things begin working together for our good first john chapter 5 and verse 3 he said for it this is the love of god that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous and the commandment of god is clear to everyone he said go into all the world and preach the gospel mark 16 verse 15 and when you keep this commandment demonstrating your love for him by loving what he loves all things begin to work together for your good romans chapter 8 and verse 28 he said and we know that all things work together for the good of them that love god many times people settle down and quote that scripture and say all oh, things work together for my good it's not for everybody's good but for them that love god for them that love god it is qualified if you want to see everything working together for your good then let your heart for god be proved and you prove the sincerity of your love for god by your commitment to the things that god loves and there is nothing god loves like the lost john chapter 3 verse 16 god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life god so loved so loved the love of god was to this extent that he gave in first john chapter 3 the bible tells us there he said behold what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us that we might be called the sons of god that we may be converted into children of god so the lord the greatest love of god is demonstrated in his love for the lost therefore those who have a heart for souls naturally have demonstrated their love for god and when you begin to demonstrate your love for God all things work together for your good you see you can never frustrate a God lover 
a man whose heart is sold out to God will always see things working together for their good. You look at the example of the man Joseph, a man who, who was sold out to God. Joseph said in the book of Genesis 45 and verse 5, he said, God sent me, be not grieved or angry with yourselves. Look at this man. A man sold to slavery by his own brothers. He said, don't be grieved or angry with yourself that you sold me hither. For God did send me before you to preserve life. What Joseph was saying is, everything I went through was worth it for your preservation. Everything I went through. I went through slavery. I went through imprisonment. But for the preservation of the seed of Israel, it was worth it. What he was simply saying is that my love for the preservation of the seed of Israel made everything I went through worth it. And that is why no matter how they schemed against Jacob, Joseph, it worked out for his good. No matter how they schemed against him. They took him and saw him coming from far. And they said, behold, this dreamer cometh. Let us kill him and see what will become of his dream. And they took this young boy and cast him into a pit. A pit where there is no water. It is a representation of a grave. And one of them said, let us not kill him. Let us kill a goat, a kid, and let us stain his garment with it and take it back to his father. And then tell the father that a wild beast has eaten him. The blood of a goat put upon the garment of this man to testify death on his behalf. But remember, that lamb is a representation of Christ whose death replaced our death. They were organizing his destruction, but Jesus was organizing his elevation. They sold him into slavery, thinking they have brought an end to him. Let us send him to a place where no one will hear from him again. He entered into the house of Potiphar at the bottom of the wrong, but the blessing of God upon his head began to raise him until he became the ruler of the house. He was cast by the scheming of Potiphar's wife into the prison. He entered at the bottom of the wrong, but the favor of God upon the life of this man lifted him until everything in the prison, Joseph was the doer of it. Suddenly, an appointment came. Two servants of Pharaoh cast into the prison, both looking cast down. And here comes a man who should be bitter, who should be tired and frustrated, looking at them and asking, why are you cast down? What is wrong? They said, we have dreamed a dream. He said, it's not interpretation with God. Tell me, and I will tell you the answer to it. He was still proffering solution in his most desperate situation. Yet, by that encounter, one of them was returned back to the palace. And then when a problem arose in the land of Egypt, they remembered there was a man in the prison. Bring him out. Let him tell us the interpretation of the dream. Here comes Joseph. About 13 years after the beginning of his ordeal, stood before Pharaoh and told him the interpretation of the dream and the answer, the solution to the problem. Pharaoh said, we cannot find a man like this in whom the spirit of the living God is. Let him be ruler over my house. He said, let him be ruler over my substance. He said, only in the king will I be, only in the throne will I be greater than you. And from that day, everything in Egypt, Joseph was the doer of it. All of this took place. Why? A heart for God. In Genesis chapter 42 and verse 8, Joseph said, But I fear God. I love God. My heart is sold out to God. This heart for God made all things work together for his good. Look at how many skimmings he went through. The skimmings of his brother. The skimmings of Potiphar's wife. But in spite of the schemings of men, all things kept working together for his good because he was a lover of God. From today, all things will begin working together for your good. You believe it, say louder, amen. I said, you believe it, say louder, amen. You believe it, say the loudest, amen. All things work together for good. So every time you find a lover of God, you find one for whom all things begin to work together for, the, for his good. I've said before that it is one thing for you to walk. It is another thing for things to work. You can put all effort to make things work. 
But when you are a lover of God, God is the one who makes them work for you. You don't struggle. Suddenly the things that others are struggling to make happen, God begins to make them work together for your good. Shout hallelujah. I said shout hallelujah. I remember the testimony of one of us who went before an interview panel, passionate pursuit, pursuit of God's, the advancement of God's kingdom. And they asked him, tell us one thing that you have done in the last few months that you feel is outstanding to, the, to humanity. This was somebody in the medical field. And suddenly he said, well, I've been a part of this move of God. And we have been going out winning souls for Jesus. Bringing and reconciling men to God. And they looked at him and said, can you give us a, the name and number of some of the souls? And he gave them on the spot. And they called them right there in the interview panel. And confirmed, yes, do you know so and so person? Yes, he's the one who led me to Christ. And from there he got the miracle appointment with access to for his family. Yet, he is not yet married. No children yet. But access for his family abroad. Everything turned around by simply seeking God first. You don't know how far you can go until your heart begins to burn for God. You don't know how high you can climb until your heart begins to burn for God. You don't know how, how the height you can scale until your heart begins to burn for God. My prayer is that today your heart will be aflame for him from this day forward. You believe it, say loud, amen. In 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 9, the Bible says, I had not seen, ear had not heard. It has not entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. I had not seen. The connotation there is that there is no single eye that can determine the limit of a destiny of a God lover. No single eye. No single eye. That is why I don't bother about those who are mocking you. They can't see you well. They are looking at an obscure image. But very shortly, their vision will be clear. And they will begin to see in you what no eye has seen before. Somebody believe it, say louder, amen. I said, somebody believe it, say louder, amen. You see, if you put on a pair of sunglasses, everything that you see takes the shade of the glasses that you are wearing. True or false? If it is a dark glasses, you discover everything begins to go slightly darker. If it is brown, everything becomes slightly brown. If it is red, everything becomes slightly red. Anytime people look at you and mock you, remind them, it is the glasses they are using to see you. It is not the real you they are seeing. But very, very shortly, the glasses will come off and their vision will be clear. And what they will see in you is what no eye has seen before. What they will hear of you is what no ear has heard before. What they will begin to understand concerning you, no heart has conceived it before. You believe it, say the loudest, amen. So very clearly we see that your love for God, your heart for God, is what makes you as it were a wonder to your world. I see each one here ending as a wonder to his world in the name of Jesus. Look at this man called David, a God lover. The only qualification of David was not skill, was not necessarily capacity, ability, was not necessarily standing. He was the, the last child of his father, the one who was considered the most insignificant. When they came to anoint a king, the father forgot that he had that son. In other words, if a king would come out of this family by any kind of means, that is the last person that can be made a king. So he called all his sons except for David. Where is David? He's somewhere in the wilderness following the sheep. A man who everyone seemed to have written off. But look at the only qualification that David had. First Samuel chapter 13 and verse 14. I have found a man after my own heart. The only qualification that David had was a heart for God. A heart for God. And how do you demonstrate it? In Psalm 119 verse 46, this is what David said. I will speak of thy testimonies also before kings and I will not be ashamed. <laughs> that is, I will not use the diplomacy to hide my Christianity. I will speak of thy testimony also before kings and I will not be ashamed. 
The God you cannot openly declare in your boardroom is not the one who will take you to the heights of life. I will speak of my own association with God even before kings. And I will not be ashamed. Jesus said, if you are ashamed of me before men, I will also be ashamed of you before God. We must come to recognize that. This man David was a man who loved God and he demonstrated it by passionate expression of his association with God to all that came around him. If you truly love God, everybody around you will know that you do. You can't hide the God you love. No. You can't hide the God you love. He will always be at the forefront. You go with him everywhere. You announce his presence everywhere. You come in contact with people. You let them know concerning him. You are continuously announcing him. Paul the apostle said in Romans 1 verse 16. He said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus. For it is the power of God unto salvation. To everyone that believe it. I am not ashamed. I will not hide my association. Paul said in Acts 26 and verse 22, he said there, he said that, he said, I will, he said, having received help therefore from God, I continue to this day witnessing both to small and to great. Continuously witnessing. That is one of the evidences, the primary demonstration of your genuine love for God. Don't tell me you love God if you don't speak of him. If you truly love him, you will continuously speak of him. Shout hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. And when we begin to do this, what we are simply demonstrating is that we are demonstrating our connection to him which ultimately makes us wonders to our world. I see each one becoming a wonder to our world in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we said, so winning is the most profitable of all stewardship platforms. Number three now, every soul winner is a fish of men and every fish caught carries a coin in it. Every soul winner is a fisher of men and every fish caught carries a coin in it. Matthew chapter 4 verse 19, Jesus said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And in Matthew 17, 27, the Bible said, Jesus speaking there, said to Peter, he said, notwithstanding, lest we offend them, go to the sea, cast an hook, take up the fish that first cometh up and open the mouth and inside of it, there is a coin. Everyone commitment to soul winning is making yourself a fisher of men. And when you catch the fish, the fish belongs to God, but the coin belongs to you. The fish belongs to God, but the coin belongs to you. The soul is God's. All souls are mine. When you go out, the soul belongs to God, but the reward belongs to you. John chapter 4 verse 36, he said, And he that reapeth receiveth wages. And gathered fruit unto life eternal. You are going forth to reap. The harvest belongs to God, but the reward and the wages belong to you. So every commitment to advancing the kingdom of God in the winning of souls makes you a fisher of men and an owner of coins. The coins in the mouth of the fish becomes your own personal reward. I see each one here this season enjoying supernatural dimension of rewards. You believe God say louder, amen. I say you believe God say louder, amen. Number four, soul winning brings honor to God and God in turn honors you. Soul winning brings honor to God and God in turn honors you. In Proverbs 14 and verse 28, the Bible says, In the multitude of the people is the king's honor, but in the want of the people is the destruction of the prince. Look at that very closely. In the multitude of the people, there is honor brought to the king, but in the want or in the scarcity of the people, it does not affect the king. Now, who does it affect? The prince in 
the want of the people is the destruction of the prince. Every time you bring souls to God, what are you doing? You are honoring God. And every time you are found honoring God, God in turn begins honoring you. In the book of John 15 and verse 8, this is what the Bible says. It said, he that herein is my father glorified, that you bring, that you bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. That you bear much fruit. When you begin to bear much fruit, you are glorifying or honoring God. And First Samuel chapter 2 verse 30 says, he that honors me, I will honor and he that despises me, I will lightly esteem. So God is showing you and I that every commitment to bringing souls in their multitudes, bringing forth much fruit to God, brings honor to him. And anyone that honors God, God will in turn honor. And hear this, any man honored by God cannot be dishonored by men. Any man honored by God cannot be dishonored by men. John 5 44 says, he said, ye are they which seek honor one from another. He said, and seek not the honor that cometh from God only. There is a honor that only God can give. And when God gives it, no man can, no man can resist it. No man can stand against it. My prayer is that in this season, each one of us will be found among those who will bring forth much fruit thereby bringing honor to God and as a result of it experiencing honor upon our lives you believe it say louder amen. amen Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 19 he said out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of them that make merry and I will multiply them and they shall not be few and because of the multiplication that has been engaged I will also glorify them and they shall not be small. In verse 21, he said, And their nobles shall come from themselves, and their governors shall proceed from the midst of them. Why? They have drawn near to engage their heart in the pursuit of me. Every time you find individuals that honor God by bringing the multitudes to him, you find God honor them by taking them to heights that they cannot dream. I believe God that for each one of us via this ongoing operation take your territory for Christ you will reach heights that you cannot even dream yeah. somebody believe it say loud amen yeah. I said somebody believe it say loud amen yeah. now here it is there are things you can pray for and ask God for but there are things that when they happen to you you look at it and say I could not even have made this a prayer point it was too far for me to think about that's what will happen to some of us here this is yeah. As you engage profitably in the advancement of the kingdom of God, the things that you cannot even ask for, the things you cannot even imagine, the things you cannot even dream about will be cheaply delivered into your hands. Somebody believe me, say louder, amen. So we discover that you honor God by soul winning and he honors you in return. Shout hallelujah. Father, we discover that soul winning is a covenant gold mine. It's a covenant gold mine. It's a covenant gold mine. Luke chapter 22 verse 35. When I sent you without post nor script. He said lack ye anything. And they said nothing. We lacked nothing. As we went on your behalf. Everything we required was supplied. We lack nothing. Every time you are committed to the advancement of God's kingdom by winning souls, you begin to see yourself entering the lack-free realm of life. Lack-free. Where everything is sufficient. Whatever you require is available. Shout hallelujah. I said shout hallelujah. In Job chapter 36 and verse 11, he said, if they obey and serve him, they will spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. If they obey and serve him, if they will commit themselves to serving my interest upon the earth, he said, then they will spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. That will be your experience in the name of Jesus Christ. This is so important. 
So you and I must commit ourselves if we are going to experience this supply flow of heaven. It is a gold mine. A gold mine means a source of continuous, unstoppable supply. That is what soul winning is. Every time you commit yourself to it, God commits himself to you. And begins to supply everything that you require. 2 Corinthians 3 verse 5, he said, not that our sufficiency is of ourselves. He said, but our sufficiency is of God. I like that. Our sufficiency is of God. What is supplying what we need is not of ourselves, but it is of God. Paul the Apostle speaking in the book of Philippians 4.19, he said, But my God shall supply your need according to his riches. When God becomes your supply, it is not according to the riches on the earth, but according to his own riches. He supplies according to his own riches. Just like you discover when you have an ambassador of a nation sent to another nation, they pay him according to the economy of his own nation. When you begin to represent God on the earth, he does not pay you according to the economy of Nigeria, not according to the economy of the, of, of the United Kingdom, not according to the economy of America. What does he pay you according to heaven's economy? The one that does not know depression. There is no devaluation of heaven's currency. It is stable at all times. At every point in time, it is the same. Continuously stable. A place that does not know downturn. Does not know sorrow. Heaven's stocks don't go down. Is somebody hearing what God is saying? Heaven's stocks don't go down. They are perpetually up. A few days ago, everybody was running helter skelter in America. Why? Stocks were going down. People were losing their value per minute. Many people were shedding tears just watching the value of their life going down because they have put their all in human stocks. But when you are serving God, you are trading on the heaven's stocks. It doesn't go down at any time. The trajectory is continuously up, 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 up. I see somebody experiencing that in this season. You believe me, say louder, amen. I said you believe me, say louder, amen. Very importantly, soul winning brings you into realms of favor. It brings you into realms of one of favor. Matthew 6 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things that others are dying for, they shall be added unto you. I tell you something favor is one of the most mysterious and most enviable virtues of the spirit favor 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 when a man is favored the man is accepted he doesn't struggle for position favor positions he doesn't struggle for possession favor cheaply gives possession when joseph arrived in front of pharaoh pharaoh handed the kingdom to him why favor on his life when Nehemiah arrived in front of the king, the king handed all of his requests unto him. Why? Favor on his life. When Israel was going into the land of promise, the land was delivered into their hand. Why? Favor upon them. He said they got not the land in possession by their own sword. Neither did their own arm save them but thy arm and the light of thy countenance because thou hast a favor towards them. In this season, the things that no hand can give you, favor will deliver it to you. I said the things that no human hand can give you, favor will deliver it unto you. Somebody believe it, say louder, amen. I said somebody believe it, say louder, amen. The things that you are not even qualified for, favor will put it in your hands. That's the power of favor. When favor comes, they stop asking about what makes you qualified for it. You just become a necessity. Favor makes men necessities. They just need you. They cannot help it until they have you. I see that dimension of favor coming upon somebody's life here. But it is at a cost. The cost is the pursuit of the lost. 
when you make it your priority, suddenly you become a, a, a necessity on the earth. You are needed. You are in demand. Your name is sounding far and near. People are now seeing you wherever they go. That will be somebody's experience here. Shout hallelujah. <laughs> when it came upon David, they began to describe him differently. The one who had no recognition in the house. Suddenly they stood before Saul and said, we have seen a son of Jesse. I have seen a son of Jesse. He is cunning in plain. He's a mighty man of valor. He said, he's, he's, a, he's a man of war. He's a, he's a prudent man in matters. He's comely as a person and God is with him. Look at his description. You ask yourself, which one of these ones does he qualify for? The only thing we know is David could play the harp very well. So number one may be qualified. How about the rest? Mighty man, mighty valiant man. He has never been to war. A man of war, the one who is in charge of war, he has not seen the war from before. He said a prudent man in matters. We don't have a record of a matter that he resolved. A comely person and God is with him. That's the power of evil. For somebody here, by the favor of God coming upon your life in this season, your description will change. I said your description will change. Your description will change. You believe it? Say louder, amen. Now, beyond this, we discover that soul winning carries certain returns that money cannot buy. Returns that money cannot buy. Let's look at a few of them quickly this morning. Number one, soul winning gives access to divine health. Divine health. Proverbs 13, 17, he said, a faithful ambassador is health. It gives access to divine health. A faithful ambassador is held. Exodus chapter 23 verse 25 and 26. The Bible says there, you shall serve the Lord your God. He will bless your bread and your water. He will take sickness away from the midst of thee. He said that there shall nothing cast their young and not be barren in the land. The number of thy days I will fulfill. Question. What company can guarantee you absence of sickness? It doesn't matter where you walk. Even if you walk in the White House, the highest they can give you is health insurance. What is health insurance? When you are sick, it will pay for you. But when the insurance has been completed, they will discharge you and say, we are sorry. Your sickness is too costly. And please hear this sickness and disease, they are too costly for man to handle. The health of man, no man can handle. Only God can handle. But God does not give health insurance, He gives you health assurance. Assurance means I am guaranteeing you that sickness and disease will not have access to you. For everyone under the sound of my voice this morning, by your engagement in this season, your last sickness is the last one forever. Somebody believe me, say the loudest, amen. God's servant and father asked us this question over and over many times. Between going to hospital once, twice a week, going for soul winning three times a week, which one is better? I think soul winning is better. Every consistent and continuous health breakdown in this season, it shall be destroyed. Shout hallelujah. No longer will they be telling you, oh, we have not seen you this month in the hospital again. From this season, they will not see you again. I said they will not see you again. Number two, soul winning procures heavenly joy. Procures what? Heavenly joy. Heavenly joy. Heavenly joy. And there is nothing that any man can do to give joy. But it is soul winning that secures heavenly joy. Why? The Bible makes us to understand that whatsoever a man sows, that is what he will reap. It means, therefore, that our sowing is what determines our reaping. When souls are won, the Bible says in Luke 15, 7, it said, there is joy in heaven. So we sow joy to heaven whenever we win souls. What does that mean? We also reap joy from heaven whenever we win souls. 
That is why every time you go out advancing the kingdom of God and you return, what happens? You find yourself rejoicing. Luke chapter 10 verse 17 and the 70 returned again with joy. Returned again with joy. Anytime you go out on the harvest field, I don't know if you have had that experience. By the time you see souls worn in their multitudes and you begin to see and count, oh, I saw one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. By the time you return, everything everybody says to you is funny. You are laughing quickly. You find yourself just cheaply rejoicing. There is a countenance of joy and excitement around you. Why? Because you have seen the salvation of the lost. Salvation brings joy. Every time you see souls saved, you begin to enjoy supernatural joy. Shout hallelujah. I said shout hallelujah. You enjoy supernatural joy. And when you have joy, you are sure to overcome. You are sure to overcome. It is the conqueror's trademark. You find the conquerors always smiling, always rejoicing, because they know that the battle is won. For somebody here, no matter what you are confronted with, that battle is won on your behalf. Yeah. You believe it, say it loud, amen. Yeah. I say you believe it, say it loud, amen. Yeah. If you look at what the scripture said, it said the 70 returned with joy. Luke chapter 10 verse 17 and verse 19 it says behold I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you nothing you become unhurtable you become one that cannot be injured by the attempts of the enemy they may gather but it says surely as many of them gather for your sake they will fall for you that's what happens when you find yourself committed to the advancement of the kingdom of God in the pursuit of the lost you sow joy in heaven and that gives you to dominion here on the earth I see that becoming somebody's experience here in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ number three number three thing that money cannot buy that soul winning procures is soul winning enthrones soul winning does what soul winning does what it enthrones soul winning and thrones Proverbs 13 and verse 20 the Bible says he that walks with the wise himself shall be wise also and anytime you are going soul winning according to Matthew 28 verse 19 to 21 he said behold I am with you so our engagement in soul winning brings us into partnership with God we are literally walking with Christ we are literally moving with Christ. And the Bible says, He that winneth souls is wise. Proverbs 11.30 So the wisdom of heaven begins to manifest on you. That is why many times on the harvest field, you are surprised at the things you say. You start speaking from a realm that does not belong to you because you are walking with him. Therefore, his wisdom is at work in you. And when you begin to operate the wisdom of God, what happens? Proverbs 8.15 he said, by me, which is wisdom, kings reign. So your rulership and your reigning commences at the instance of his wisdom. And that wisdom is connected in your advancement of his kingdom. Therefore, I'd like you to recognize that every commitment to advancing the cause and the kingdom of God procures for us our own enthronement. For you in this season, your crown, no man will take it. I said your crown, no one will take it. Your crown, no one will take it. And that crown is one that has effect and impact now in the present and also in eternity. That means while you are here on the earth, you are living an enthroned life. He said for he has made us kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth so here on the earth living an enthroned life and there in eternity living an enthroned life he said simply because you have continued with me he said I have appointed unto you a kingdom you are operating in a realm of authority and dominion I see that becoming your experience in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You believe it, say loud, amen. I said, you believe it, say loud, amen. 
You believe it, say the loudest, amen. amen. It means, therefore, as long as you and I are ready to pay the cost, then you and I can be sure of enjoying the prize. No one here will miss their portion in the name of Jesus. I said, no one here will miss their portion in the name of Jesus. What a joy we are going to be partaking of the communion, which among other things carries all that is required to empower us to live the life of Christ. And Christ lived the life that gave him capacity to advance the kingdom at all costs. He said, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish the work. I see that kind of grace coming upon you and I today in the name of the Lord Jesus. Will you lift your hand to heaven right now and give God thanks for his word that you have received. Give him thanks for his word. Father, thank you for your word that I've received this morning. I give you praise. I give you praise and I give you glory. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Before we go any further this morning, if you are here in God's presence and you have not yet surrendered your life to Jesus, you have not yet made him the Lord and the Savior of your life, today you have the opportunity. You want to give your life to Jesus and make him Lord and Savior of your life and surrender all that you are to him. Quickly rise on your feet right now. I want to pray with you. It will be a brand new day for you. A new opportunity for you. A new dawn upon your life and destiny. Quickly rise on your feet all over this place. All over this place, rise on your feet. Thank you, Jesus. Also, if you are here and you know that somewhere along the line, some things have gone wrong and you need to rededicate your life to Jesus. You need a new beginning with him. You need a new start with him. Quickly also rise on your feet. Rise on your feet. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus. You want to have a new beginning with him. You want, to be, you want to return so that you can be restored. Quickly rise on your feet also. All over this place. Give Jesus a big hand everybody. As they rise everywhere. Thank you Lord. If you have done that. The first and second call. Please make your way to the closest aisle to you. And I will pray with you from there. Make your way to the closest aisle. It's not too late for you to join them. This is the greatest decision that you can make. The decision for Jesus is the decision that defines destiny. Give Jesus a big hand, everybody, as they begin to move quickly. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to the Lamb. Please, suspend filling your form for now and lift up your right hand before the Lord. And pray this prayer after me from the depth of your heart. Lift up your right hand before the Lord and pray this prayer after me from the depth of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus, louder, Lord Jesus, I come to you today as a sinner. I know you died for me. On the third day, you rose again. Jesus, come into my life as my Lord and Savior. Take control of me from this day forward. Now I know that I am born again. Thank you, Lord, for saving me in Jesus' name. Amen. Keep your hand lifted. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you today for these precious ones. You have drawn them by your mighty hand unto yourself. Let the grace that has brought them keep them until the last day. We decree that none of these ones shall draw back. None will return back to their vomit. Lord, let every blessing of salvation, every benefit of salvation, let it manifest in each one of their lives. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, mighty God. Because we know it is done already. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen and amen. Congratulations. It's a new day for you. Please be sure to complete your forms very clearly and return it to the official closest to you. And after that, you may return to your seat. Be blessed. Shall we all rise on our feet this morning and give Jesus a big, big hand as we receive our Father to take us further. Make it bigger for the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, we've been blessed by the word this afternoon. Please understand that every commandment 
target your advancement. You comply, it moves you forward. You ignore, you stay at the same point. Every commandment advances the destiny of those who choose to run with them. As the Lord liveth, the year shall be a year of leaps and bounds for you. When I look around me, I see my Lord Jesus around me. You just see Jesus manifesting himself in various lives around you. Open your eyes. Don't shut your eyes. So when it's not just about advancing the kingdom, it's about advancing your life. Seek you first. The advancement of my kingdom and all these things that others are dying to get, I will be adding them to you for free. For free. For free. For free. For free. You never suffer a sleepless season in your life anymore. Depression shall have no inroad into your life. Just simply share Jesus' love with others. Stand in a place of prayer with passion in your soul for their salvation. Enjoy identifying with Jesus openly. And without any sweat on your brows, you are making progress. You are advancing. You are changing levels. Your mockers are changing their mind. Because things are working for you. That's the way it works. Can money buy health? Can money buy joy? Can money buy rest? Those are the things we got to show. For those who think we are plenty full, they are the things we've got to show. I know no fear of entering into the realm of all and rest longest time. I've never had my head cast down since I got this truth of all and rest. Joy unspeakable, full of glory. Being on top of situations without having to struggle to have it so. Walking in dominion over serpents and scorpions and over the past of the enemy and nothing is able to hurt you because you are simply on the go for Jesus. Amen. Amen. Can I tell you something? He said, even in old age, he shall still be bringing forth fruit. Now, that means he was bringing forth fruit, which was elongating his life. And he keeps bringing forth fruit, enjoying longevity with full vitality. Not they are carrying him to go and bathe him and come and put food in his mouth. Now, wait a minute. Ask the Lord living. The blessings of genuine soul hunger will be made manifest openly in your life from henceforth. Therefore, as we serve the table of the Lord, go with this understanding and aspiration. Jesus, from this communion table, empower me to live like you. Whatever cannot be found in you shall no longer be found in me. Let me be your genuine replicate. 
as I partake of your flesh and of your blood. Empower me to live like you. Empower me to pray like you. And empower me to pray what you pray. Thy kingdom come, that will be done on earth. Empower me to pursue after souls like you. He said, my meat is to do the will of it now send me and to finish his work. Why? Every other thing is added from that platform. Lift up your two hands and pray. Lift up your two hands and pray. You don't have to be mature to bring people to Jesus. Samaritan woman got, met Jesus the same day he met him. He went to town and brought many people to him. He went to town and brought many people to him. You don't need to mature as a believer to tell somebody, come and see Jesus who changed my life. Come and see Jesus who changed my life. Now, receive that grace. 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 Nero Now, be specific. Jesus, empower me through the mission of the communion to live like you. A sickness-free life, an oppression-free life, a fear-free life. In the name of Jesus, empower me to pray like you. To be praying kingdom and government prayer with all zeal and zeal. Empower me to pursue after souls like you. Let some win a big like eating for me. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. You know, I used to think that until you are baptized in the Holy Ghost, you can't lead anybody to Christ. No. <laughs> no. As soon as a Samaritan woman saw this is Jesus, she blew out of town. Come, see a man. Is this not the Christ? Come, meet with him. And many people went out. A multitude got saved. Praise God. Hallelujah. I started seeing people saved since... 1970. I got baptized in the Holy Ghost 1975 Hallelujah. because of wrong doctrines. Mm. Thank God I escaped. Amen. Amen. One of my converts is among the elders today. I led him to Christ 1974. I got baptized in the Holy Ghost 1975. You don't have to mature to get somebody to Christ. Amen. Can't you direct somebody to a shop where you bought something from? Excuse me, where did you buy this tie from? Oh, somewhere in VI. We are in VI. You don't need to mature to know that. Get somebody to Jesus with joy. You know something? I have no struggles over anything. Yes, sir. When I hear boo in the night, I just say, who is making noise here? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not running around. I'm not running around. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> My police was following me yesterday. Carry one big one. I said, to do what? <laughs> Is going to go. <laughs> oh, no, I don't carry this kind of big gun. You're following me to come and do what? Praise God. When this place had no building, I was going through it alone in the night. So is it now that uh, there is light everywhere? You can... <laughs> now your rest has come. Amen. You know something? Yes, sir. This is the key. Amen. Amen. This is the key. The key. The key to everything. You are touching the heart of God. Hallelujah. You can't have a heart for God and not make your marks on earth. Now, in the name of Jesus, whatever accompanies this commandment begins to accompany you from today. No more sickness. No more disease. No more depression. No more hunger. No more lack. No more war. In the name of Jesus. Now, lift up your two hands. Whatever you desire from the Lord's table. Now, begin to call for it. Let the still was take their positions right now. Let the still was take their positions right now. Whatever you desire from the Lord's table. Begin to call for it right now. 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 Whatever you desire from the Lord's table, begin to call for it right now. 
whatever cannot be found in Christ. John 6, 57. As the living Father has sent me, and I live like the Father. So he that eateth me, he shall live like me. You are taking the communion today to be empowered to live like him. Now, take it by faith. Take it by faith. Take it by faith. Take it by faith. Now, whatever cannot be found in Christ must not be found in you. But you can't imagine in Christ, they won't see it in you anymore. Now, take it by faith. Take it by faith. Take it by faith. Leku take nako. Nekuare sange. Barike toto tande. Epuake la kara. Yashiaga. Yashiaga. Kekuka to prade. Marose siza. Marose siza. Anko kokata. Lenkrokotia. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Father, in the name of Jesus, we partake of this mystery today to give mastery over the affairs of life. Jesus, through the mission of the communion, empower every one of us to continue to live like you. In sound health, sound mind, and sound spirit. Walking in dominion with our sway. Commanding spiritual breakthroughs with our struggles. Let the passion of each of us begin to burn like yours. Ignite our prayer altar with new order of prayer grace. Empower us to keep praying kingdom expansion prayer. Ignite our passion the more for souls. And fulfill your words in our lives. Thank you, Father. Now, this table today declared the flesh and the blood of Jesus. And we use a point of contact to all the other tables set in this tabernacle today and outside. In the name of Jesus, everyone partaking in faith is empowered to another level. Your life will continue to reflect Jesus. In Jesus' name. Whatever you have required from the Lord today from this table is delivered to you for your testimony. Please get seated and let's serve the table of the Lord while the choir ministers of the Lord right now as we partake of this. Thank you, Jesus. We are in our operation, Andrew, week. A week that we have a covenant to bring at least one soul to Jesus next Sunday service. Commit to it. Be dedicated to it. Don't ignore it. Every commandment you ignore robs you of the next step forward. Don't ignore it. Every soul has equal value with Jesus. There are no timbers and calibers with God. Every soul weighs the same in the sight of God. Get under the bridge. Get among the down trodden, they call them, but they are Jesus' dignities. Dignities. Go after them, bring them to Jesus, and you'll be happy you did. It's your season. Hallelujah. Can run through a troop and leap over the wall. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's my strength and my shield. He gives power to run. Hallelujah. I can run through a troop and be over the wall. Jesus is my strength and my shield. He gives power to all. I can run through a troop and be over the wall. Jesus is my strength and my shield. He gives power to all. I am free, say I am free from condemnation. Jesus is the rock. I can run through a troop and live over the wall. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. I am free, say from condemnation. Jesus, I can run through a troop.
say I am free. I'm no more bound. Jesus is the rock. I can run through a troop and live over the wall. Hallelujah. Hade, hade. I am free, say. My liberty is sure. My deliverance is today. Come on. I can run through a troop and live over the wall. Hallelujah. give Jesus the biggest clap offering. Amen. This week is declared your week. As you keep pursuing after God and the interests of his kingdom, only goodness and mercy will keep pursuing after you. The one only way, and only way to prove the validity of any truth is to engage with it. Our obedience is the only way to prove the validity of any truth of scriptures. He said, prove me now, they are with. Prove me with obedience. And watch, I confirm my word. That is not theoretical. I kept saying the only the week, be specific. Avoid ambiguity. Tell Jesus what you want. And Friday night I said, Jesus, give me 400 souls this Saturday. I got so tight with so many things about this Saturday. We had the meeting that ended at 3.30 a.m. I said, this Saturday, you are giving me 400 souls minimum. So we hit the road and went. In four places only, we got 484 people that turned their life over to Jesus. Please... Be specific, avoid ambiguities. If you don't have a go post, you don't become a go getter. Define what you want, 
Prove your faith by engaging your faith with kingdom advancement and divorce. It will fortify your confidence in dealing with the issues of your life. Amen. Amen. I said, Jesus, ensure that no less than 200 of them showed up today. According to Ecclesiastes 11.6. So you're sitting in the morning, in the evening, we don't know your hand. You don't know whether it shall prosper, either this or that, or both of them alike. So, minimum 200. Minimum 200. Now, be specific. Be specific. Ask the Lord, leave it. Wait a minute. By October 7, this church shall be minimum three times where we were in 2017. What that means is that any number of souls that your faith can carry make specific demands for them. I went this way, my wife went that way. She returned with over 40 people for Jesus. That's what kept us going. You say, poor you. That's why I'm as poor as I am. <laughs> I've been running after this without looking for thank you or well done from nobody. Hallelujah. Jesus has never failed on his part once. You know what it means? To walk the walk I walk and don't have any pill you swallow. I am not on any medication, not even supplements, not vitamins. Everything you need. Is here. Is he inside me? No headache, no stomach ache, no pain. This thing works. Open your eyes and see Jesus manifesting in your neighbor. It should be enough. Make yourself of no reputation. Sickness doesn't know degree. Yes, sir. Sickness doesn't know status. I'm MDCO. Where sickness hit you, there's no MDCO. There is no. Jesus made himself of no reputation. I was with the people, or kind of people yesterday, in their midst, in the market, in their midst, just loving them because they have value to God. Oh, yeah. They have value to me. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yet, some fellow said, 100 reputable people in the world, you are one of them. Amen. Where is reputation without Jesus? Jesus is my reputation. The thing is me. Jesus is my reputation. Stay on it. There are a few people who are busy as I am in this world. Stay on it. Don't stop deceiving yourself. I'm busy. Busy doing what? Get down and change your level. You are long overdue for a jump. As the Lord lives, your year of lips and bands is finally here. Why are you crying? You mustn't get anything less in anything more than the grace of God has given me. You mustn't be one, one bit lower, less than the grace flowing in me. Because whatever flows on the head of the priest flows down his beers, gets down to his head. I mean, so you must share it. Therefore, sickness and disease is over in your life today. Yeah. Sorrow and depression is over in your life today. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. You know what? You will soon be na named number one in your field. Your business will only match number one in your area. Yeah. In your professional practice, you will still be recognized globally. Yeah. It's your year of unlimited opportunities. Yeah. May you not sell off to carelessness. Yeah. Go in peace. Yeah. The week is your week. Yeah. Your time has finally come. Yeah. You are returning on Sunday with your shifts in your hand. No one returns here empty this Sunday. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every arrow shot at you returns back to sender. You are not serving me. You got it wrong. You are not serving the church. You are serving Christ. I, I can tell you he never fails. You'll never be disappointed again. Together, let's share the goodness of the Lord and fellowship, everybody. Surely. 
God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we shall be in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Peace. It's my new dawn era. What eyes have not seen, nor ears heard, shall be the other day in my life this year. Congratulations. Congratulations.